So friends, I'd love to introduce you today to a very, very special guest, and that is Dwight Mihalik. And uh, uh, he's the current uh, chairperson of the International Council of Management Consulting Institutes, and uh, which is, of course, you, I've already introduced ICMCI to you, and uh, you don't need to know more than that. Uh, he is also an independent consultant who is the president of his own firm called Effective Managers, based out of Ottawa in Canada. And uh, he will uh, talk to us about ICMCI, about competencies, about you know where the profession is headed, and so many other things. So, Dwight, we have an audience of people, all of whom who wish to take the plunge to set up their own management consulting businesses, mm -hmm. and. You know, we all have our dreams, we all have our ambitions, and everybody wants to see their business grow and be successful. And, mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, uh, you know, make a lot of money and be profitable and perhaps emerge as thought leaders in their own way. Mm -hmm. so ICMCI has done a lot of work, and I'm aware of that, as uh, in developing this competency framework for consultants to serve as a standard for the profession. And, uh, could you share something about this competency framework and, uh, you know? Sure. Um, well, first of all, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm just delighted to uh, to talk with you, Anita, and and to meet uh, virtually uh, your uh, your participants in this great initiative. Uh, and good luck to uh, to all of you uh, in terms of your journey that you're starting in terms of uh, the consulting career. Um, I, I think the starting point is what is the profession of management consulting? Uh, because as ICMCI, what we're concerned with is the advancement of the profession around the world. So that means we need to have in a baseline uh, for what it is to, uh, to be a consultant. Uh, the, the, the barrier to entry is very, very low in most countries. In fact, in most countries of the world, all except Austria, you have to print a business card that says consultant on it, and then you can say, I am a consultant. But it, but it has to be more than that, because there is the right way of doing consulting, and there's the not so right way of doing consulting. So the, the framework we have in place is the certification, the certified management consultant is, is the mark, I, I wear, wear my pin all the time, is the mark of the professional in management consulting because it means that that consultant has been accepted by their care peers uh, through their institute in their home country to be uh, one of the members of the institute and to be certified by the members in that institute that, uh, that they're, um, they're competent to be in the profession. So, so in terms of the competency framework itself, it, it's not easy to get, but then neither should it be. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's not easy to be a doctor or a lawyer either. So as a management consultant, to prove your competency in the profession, you do need to go through a process where you can demonstrate your, your general knowledge of, of business, uh, your, your specialty knowledge and also your own personal skills and capability. Uh, so we've developed a competency framework that documents that and the process that institutes go through uh, in the awarding of the certified management uh, consulting accreditation. Yep, so, uh, so I do believe that the competency framework is one of the most comprehensive, uh, you know, uh, guidelines or standard mm -hmm. or articulation of what it takes to be a good consultant. Mm -hmm. And I do know that it has uh, three different categories of uh, competencies. So, so what do you use this for? You use this for, I mean, training offerings from ICMCI for the independent consultant or, or what is it used for? It's, it's um, well, I guess the starting point is that it's, it's that declaration of competency. Um, one of the huge strengths that we have in in our profession is that it is uh, recognized globally. So it, because it's a global standard established by ICMCI, overseen by ICMCI. So for example, in India, which is a member of ours, uh, if uh, your institute uh, issues the CMC, it's to the same level of minimum standards anywhere in the world. So we have reciprocity. So a management consultant who is a CMC uh, and that moves to another country or works in another country will be recognized by the institute in that country because they know uh, that level of competence exists. Uh, 
More powerfully than that, though, is that if I have a CMC and I meet one of you uh, in the future and you have the CMC, I know we can collaborate because we have this, this similar means of demonstrating to, uh, to our peers that, uh, that we've demonstrated our ability to, to, to do this work uh, at, you know, well and, and uh, that we've proven client satisfaction. Um, the other part of the competency framework, which I think is important, is that uh, it requires a demonstration of uh, experience. So, uh, so you have to have had a minimum amount of experience. It usually works out to about three years of full-time consulting. Um, and uh, in, in the application process, you have to demonstrate successfully delivering projects with clients. So there's a process, the pro exact process differs from country to country, but at the end of the day, the panel that reviews your application will look at these um, case studies and say, yes, this person knows what they're doing or don't, may, may in fact do reference checks with the clients to make sure that things are in place. So that's, that's a really, really important component of it. So as far as training goes, there's, there's all kinds of training that's available, but the basic part is we call the essentials of management consulting, which again differs from country to country because situations differ from country to country, but the essentials of management consulting give you those same, uh, those same base skills. Um, what's relatively new in terms of training is, uh, is an implementation of the new, new global standard called ISO 2700, which is a standard by ISO for the delivery of management consulting services. So we've delivered a checklist for the implementation of, uh, of, that, uh, of that standard, uh, which is really about transparency between the consultant and the client in terms of what is the consulting project? How do we set up the contract? How do we implement it? How do we know that we know when we're done? What's the closure? Um, and uh, we have a training program in place for that. The difference is that the ISO 2700 is kind of the baseline of what it is to be a professional management consultant. So there's not an experience requirement, but the training, uh, training can help uh, the, um, the consultant to understand what it is to be a professional management consultant versus somebody that's doing part-time work and says that they're a consultant. Okay, so that's good, that's wonderful. And so other than the essentials of manage, management consulting and a couple of other, there must be more learning opportunities. I do believe there's a newsletter which I get uh, frequently mm -hmm. and there are lots of webinars. So yeah. how, how, do, how do the uh, participants of our program source uh, or connect with you so that they could uh, you know, access these webinars and these, yeah. these, the newsletter that you're putting out? Exactly. It's, it's, it's all of those things, Anita. And I think one of the most important things about the accreditation or even being a member of an institute is this ability to network with others. Um, with what we've seen in the pandemic over the last year, um, but even before that, what we've seen with the pace of change and, and the disruption that's happening, uh, management consultancy has to be very fast to pivot because the situation our clients are in is changing very dramatically, very quickly. So the best way to do that is to have that network of peers of other management consultants that we can reach out to and share information with and learn from and, uh, and, and build projects together to, to help solve problems in communities. So, uh, so from the perspective of ICMCI, we think about how can we do that on a global perspective? So yes, we have the CMC Today newsletter. So you can go onto our website, uh, icmci.org. Uh, we also have uh, a, a more of a brand name, which is cmc-global.org. Uh, so either one of those will get you to the same place. And there you can find our newsletter and subscribe to it. Um, and we also have um, regular events where we host speakers from around the world that will share their best practices with us. And then management consultants from around the world can, can come into that and, uh, and learn uh, from them and ask questions and, and join in the discussion. And that's on the events page on our, on our website. But I think more importantly than that, what COVID has taught us in the last year is that borders are, are getting more transparent and lower. So, so all our, our institute members around the world are, I shouldn't say all, but most are now doing more and more virtual events, uh, virtual conferences, virtual meetings and virtual webinars. So any member anywhere in the world is, has access uh, to those uh, webinars where you can learn from uh, people in, in other countries as well. And, and that's part of the CMC. Um, when, once you get the certified management consulting, you do, uh, you do your learning, you 
you pass your entrance exam, you get certified, but can, after that, you have to continue with your professional development because we have to sit, stay current. And in fact, that's that's part of it. Every every so, so many years, there's a recertification process to uh, to to uh, show that we are keeping up to date with everything. So as you can tell, I'm excited. I think the networking part is the most important part in, in, in my own career. Uh, that's where I've had the most, most advantage out of my CMC designation is to be able to col collaborate with and learn from my peers around the world. Excellent. So if our participants uh, become CMCs eventually, uh, they would have access to those kind of opportunities as well. The one uh, as, that they yes, could yes. Yeah, exactly. As CMCs, but also as members of the Institute, the, then they would be knowledgeable. But even as individuals who, who aspire to the profession, there's, there's no bar to those. So, uh, so many of these events, not all of them, but many of them are uh, um, open to anyone. It's just easier to be in the loop if you're a CMC or a member of the Institute, because then you get the communications in a regular way. Um, but if, uh, if any, of, any of you uh, became aware of, of an event around the world that, uh, was, that was of interest to you, you should, uh, you should try to attend it. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, before we close, I have one more question. And yes. that is, you know, the world has seen so much of change the last uh, couple of, uh, I think last one year with mm -hmm. the pandemic and uh, you know all the impact and the churning and the chaos and the continuing chaos that's happening. And in our country, I, at this point in time, we are going through major uh, upheavals of all kinds. So how do you see the need for consultants to learn and adopt new competencies? And uh, what are the plans to evolve the competency framework that you have to remain relevant and effective in post COVID and post COVID times? Yeah. Um, I, I think the most fundamental thing, and I've alluded it to already uh, in this conversation is that the pace of change is increasing. Cool. So we have to learn as management consultants, how to be more flexible, uh, how to learn more and faster, and how to demonstrate that ability to learn to our clients. So there's no question that digitization, uh, automation, virtualization, all of these things in the last year have, uh, have been implemented at a pace that we never would have imagined in 2019. Uh, so I've attended in, for example, as chair, I've attended in the last year more conferences of our institute members than I did in the two years before that, simply because people accept now doing virtual meetings. And, and, and so that's the silver lining. So as management consultants, what we now need to be thinking about is how can we take and apply uh, uh, digitization and virtualization into our own practices, which reduces costs for clients, which makes it easier for us to change and makes us actually accessible to clients in different parts of our countries or different parts of the world that we might not have had access to, uh, to before. And the bonus is in the, in the doing of that, we, we learn about the kinds of things that we need to help our clients do as well in terms of, of uh, digitizing and automating their own services so that they can be prepared and able to uh, pivot as quickly as possible. I think the other area, and this is my own area of specialization, is, is working in and understanding the fundamentals of what makes organizations work. So what are those systemic root cause things that really need to be working very well in organizations? In good times, it's very easy because you've got the, 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 the gross revenue and the net profit that you're looking for. So you can accept a lot of inefficiencies inside the organization. In the future years, we won't be able to do that because someone else will figure out how to do it more effectively and more efficiently and undermine, you, um, undermine our clients in, in the marketplace. So, so we as consultants need to understand these root cause um, systems and uh, and really be able to advise our clients to clean up those inefficiencies inside the organization. I think of that as input versus output. Almost always our client organizations are measuring the outputs. They now have to start thinking more and more about the inputs and how to make sure that their people systems and their management systems and their accountability frameworks are all working well. So change management. And change management. Yes, that's right up there. I should have said that one Everything as well. that it brings and everything that it brings. <laughs> exactly. Anything and everything. Yeah. And I, I really resonate a lot with the uh, virtualization and your ability to be present in so many more countries as the chairperson of uh, ICMCI. Uh, and uh, same here, you know, as a consultant today, I'm coaching and I've got clients in far-flung areas in India, as far as Nagaland mm -hmm. and Kohima mm -hmm. and you know, all over the country. 
So, yeah. uh, which otherwise I would not have thought was possible uh, you know, yeah. when we were doing face-to-face -face, uh, work. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same for me exactly. I'm based here in Ottawa, Canada, and two of my current clients, one is in Mongolia and one is in China. So it's uh, exactly the same. There you are. So uh, I'm sure the participants of this program have really benefited. And uh, on behalf of the All India Management Association, uh, Advanced Certificate Program in Business Consulting, the management and the administration guys and the participants of this program i'd love to say a very very heartfelt thank you and i hope you stay safe from covid uh, and uh, i hope uh, things go well for you from here on well thank you again for the invitation i really appreciate it. and as you can tell i love talking about these things and and sharing information and and good luck to you and and all of the students for your for your studies and and also be safe and, and healthy i know it's a very difficult time in india right now with covid so uh, so be safe be healthy and good luck with your career you're starting a very exciting career there's no question about that thank you thank you once again thanks a lot yeah.